All right, today I've got this Samsung DLP TV, Digital Light Processing. This one's an HLT5075S is in Sam X, HLT5075SX. And on these models, this is uh, the 720p model. They do make a 1080 model as well. You can tell if it's the 720 by the last digit in the model number, the 5075, so that 5 on the end. If it uh, is 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, it's a 720, and if it's a 6, 7, 8, or 9, then it's a 1080 set. And as you can see by looking at the picture very closely on this one, it's got the very famous Samsung problem where it's got the white spots all over the screen as well as up in this area it's actually got a bunch of black spots as well and so let's talk about changing the DLP chip on this particular set okay so with the back off what we're going to want to do is go ahead and remove the light engine the optical block from the TV start by removing the two bottom screws down here Next, you want to remove the LVDS cable. Uh, sometimes these are loose enough that you can get them without the help of a screwdriver. Other times you do need to use a screwdriver to get them out. It just unplugs. It's actually, you may be able to see it in the video, I'm not sure. It's a DVI cable. Uh, some models will have two uh, cables from the uh, digital board over to the DMD board. Other models only have one. This one only has one. Now once that's removed, we want to go ahead and take this jack cover off. And there's one screw on the corner. Bring you back around here. There's another screw on that corner and that holds the digital uh, board as well as the power supply in place. You have to pull it out slightly because the uh, LVDS cable sits in a recess. Disconnect the ballast power supply. And once that's done, the engine can just be brought out the back. Watch for wires as they try to get caught up. And then the engine is completely free from the TV. Now that the engine's out of the set completely, now is a good time to go ahead and uh, if you have a can of compressed air, or like I use a uh, little shop vac with a blower, now's the time to blow the dust out of it. You don't really have to worry about uh, blowing dust into any locations that there shouldn't be. The, the biggest problem on these is if you try to blow the dust out of them, it'll get into the DLP chip and you'll have these little, uh, sometimes uh, quarter size blobs in the picture. Other times they'll be uh, half dollar size uh, up to uh, sometimes even softball size, maybe three to four inches in diameter. And that's actually dust on the face of the DLP chip. And you can normally see them on dark scenes because the dust is still in the light path and it reflects. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this and blow the dust off. I'll be right back with it. Okay, I've got the dust blown out of it. So I want to start by going ahead and taking out the two screws that cover up the lens. This is the gasket assembly. It has some foam rubber around it to keep the lens clear and the next thing is to there's a, a piece of conductive tape back here carefully remove that unplug the one ribbon cable for the color wheel uh, this is the motor portion of the color wheel the second ribbon cable is a little uh, three pin cable and that's the optical sensor that detects the phase of the color wheel uh, you'll want to Get these wires out of this little tie. Uh, very carefully unplug the ballast. Now to unplug these cables, on this particular model, uh, you have to push on this little latch assembly. Maybe kind of hard to see on the video, but it's a little latch. So as you go to unplug it, let me see if I can plug it back in here. As you go to unplug it, you have to actually push up and pull straight up at the same time. Do the same thing with all the other cables on the DMD board. Uh, this one goes to the actuator. This is the lamp door switch as well as the temperature safety switch. And these two 
with the yellow, black, and red are the cooling fans. One is the DMD fan, the other one is the lamp and ballast fan. Go ahead and un unhook uh, those cables. We'll go ahead and just absolutely remove this little DMD cooling fan. We're going to go ahead and take these four spring-loaded screws out of the DMD assembly. Okay, now um, we've got everything disconnected from the DMD board. We need to move the heat sink out of the way. And you have to unhook the clip. It just kind of hooks over the corner of it. You can see the uh, edges. There's two little clips on each side. Just unhook one, it'll hinge back. Uh, remove the heat sink. I always like to put positive pressure on it and twist it a little bit before I pull it back. Make sure you keep this heat sink material in good shape because you're going to have to reuse that. Next, there's four screws, one in each corner that need to be removed. The bottom ones are a little bit hard to get to. There are three screws on this model under these three white tabs and you do not want to adjust or mess with those screws. And as long as you don't adjust or mess with those screws. You won't need to do any major alignment when you reassemble this. Once you've got all those screws out, the cover will just come right off the DMD board. Next, there's four more screws on this clamp assembly. These are stainless steel screws so they don't rust. Here are the three screws I was talking about that you do not want to move. Uh, if you were to move those, you'd have to do a geometry mechanical alignment. It's a little bit in depth to do that. Once you've got those uh, four screws out of the way, the DMD board, sometimes they're a little bit stubborn. It's kind of tight, it can be taken out and then there is the defective DLP chip right there. On the Samsung models, they do not have a zero insertion force socket. On the Mitsubishi models, they do. There's a little screw you turn. It releases all the pins. On the Samsung, you just simply unplug them. There's a row of pins behind it. It only goes in one way. It's keyed, so when you go to put your new chip on, you don't have to worry about getting it in there the wrong direction. Once you get it lined up, it just snaps into place. Okay, now here's my new DLP chip. And as of the time I made this video, uh, the best place that I could find the best price was at shopjimmy.com. They always put their stamp on their parts. So the new DLP chip is in. Now one thing you really want to pay particular attention is the face of the DLP chip. You wanna check it with a very bright light. It's kinda of hard to see. I don't know if you may be able to see it in the video or not. Let me try to zoom in on it real quick. Yeah, you may not be able to see it, but on this particular one, if you use a super bright light and you angle it at just the right angle, you can actually see dust there is a speck of dust right on the face of this one. I doubt you'll be able to see it, but you'll want to use a very fine cloth of some type. And the only uh, area you're really super concerned about is the little glass right in the center of the DLP chip. So if you see any dust on that, you'll want to go ahead and wipe it off with some type of a lint-free cloth. Uh, check it with a really bright light at an angle to make sure there's no specks of dust on it. Also, while you have this open, it's a good idea to take a can of air and blow dust in here where the DLP chip mates, just or blow air in there where the DLP chip mates just to make sure there's no dust in there that may accumulate on the face of the chip during reassembly. 
Okay, I've got my DLP chip all ready to go here. And uh, one thing I always like to do is I'll, I'll put the, uh, my invoice number of my shop repair, plus I'll put the date, just the month and the year on the DLP chip. And it's all cleaned up and ready to go and it's dust free. So uh, the reassembly is just the opposite of the dis disassembly. This is probably the toughest part. Getting one of these screws started in here to hold that bracket into place. Now when reassembling this cover, it goes on this way. You'll see this little black uh, piece of felt that covers a screw. This is a piece of aluminum with a piece of heat sink material attached to it. It cools one of these IC chips in here, which is the power supply for the DMD board. Uh, also, when reassembling this, make sure that you don't have any of these cables tucked. Sometimes they want to fall in this hole. They get tucked behind the circuit board, which makes them very hard to reassemble. There we go. One of these came off, but don't worry about it. As long as you don't try to adjust the screws, you won't have any problems. Now be very careful when trying to reinsert this ribbon cable. If you uh, pinch it, it's kind of hard to see on the video, but I like to put it in there and I, I work it down just a little bit, wiggle it side to side ever so gently. And here's the other cable from the color wheel. Just push it in until you hear a click, it's locked into place. Same thing with the ballast. You'll hear a little click when it's into place. Route these cables back through here where they came from. Uh, fan selection, they'll go in either socket. It doesn't really matter which one you put it in. One socket's labeled fan number one. The other socket is labeled fan number two. Now we'll go ahead and put the heat sink back into place. And I'm just gonna hook If I can do it, it's kind of hard to see with the camera right in the way here. Hook one side over it. I don't like to just push it in. I like to relieve the pressure, push it over, and then let it hook naturally. One thing I want to make sure it has good, good positive pressure. This one really doesn't feel too tight, so I'm going to take the clip back off. And I'm just going to bend each side just a little bit to apply a little bit more pressure. Got the top hooked. Okay, feels much better. Sometimes you'll have to wiggle it around to get the spring right in the center of the heat sink. You want it on there nice and tight, so as you can see it's on there very good. It's hardly moving at all right now compared to what it was just a moment ago. So let's go ahead and put our little DMD fan back in place. Plug the fan in, hook it up, make sure everything spins freely. Let's put these last four with the springs back in here. You can do this before or after, it's not really critical. In fact, it really doesn't even need to be in there unless you're doing a mechanical alignment. Once you uh, try to do a mechanical alignment, the DLP chip needs positive pressure. It will affect the focus ever so slightly if you leave them out. I've also, because they're stainless steel, going into uh, 
basically aluminum or pop metal. I've had them seize up and break off in the past, and once one breaks off, there's really nothing you can do. Just don't over tighten them. Tighten them up until they're snug, and then call it good at that point. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about real quickly is the focus. And so there's a focus adjustment on this one. So looking at the back of the uh, optical engine, if you turn this unit around, uh, kind of hard to see from this angle. Let me move my light just for a second. But right up in here, there's a little uh, thumb wheel and it, it you can move it. You can kind of see it's, it's a little knurled wheel back in here. And that is the focus adjustment. After you change the DLP chip, you may have to do a, uh, a refocus. I don't know if you can see the spots on the, uh, on the uh, camera. Let me zoom in on this one a little bit. There you go. You can actually see the bad pixels as you move this around. And so that's one indication if you look at it with a flashlight and you actually can see all those stuck pixels that you've got a bad DLP chip. Of course, you knew that already by the picture. So let's go ahead and put this back in the set now. I'll put the cover back on the lens and we'll talk about uh, service mode and focus adjustments. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the engine back in there. Um, I've cleaned the lens with the soft cloth just like I did the DLP chip. And uh, this one was a little bit scratched. It looked like somebody else may have tried to clean it at one time. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect everything back up here. We want to make sure we hook up the LVDS cable as well as, as well as the power supply to the DMD board. Now we're going to run the back off, uh, run the set with the back off. So we're going to have to uh, kind of trip the lamp door safety switch a little bit. You can do it with a piece of tape. I usually try to just wrap the wire around it and I kind of wedge it back into the uh, lamp connector, safety switch connector. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook some power up to it and we'll fire it up. Just don't forget before you do any mechanical or electrical adjustments that you have the engine locked in tight. Now you can do, if you need to, you can loosen one of these screws and pull just one side back. That'll affect the rotation of the picture on the screen if you do just one side or the other side if it's off ever so slightly. Okay, as with other Samsung sets, you'll need an original Samsung remote to enter the service menu. And like with the other ones, it's mute 182 power. So I'm going to hit that, mute 182 power. If everything's connected up, you should get your uh, lamplight blinking, you should get your melody. And then the set should fire up and it should come up in the service mode. Some models may say factory is loading. Other ones may just come up with some information on the screen. Okay, so I've got it up in the service mode now. So I'm gonna go into my option mode. Actually, I'm gonna go into my D DDP 3021. And the first thing I'm gonna hit is horizontal vertical position. And you can see, kind of hard to see on the camera, but it puts a red border all the way around the outside of the screen and it's horizontal vertical position. So if you move uh, the up down, you can see it moves the vertical positioning up and down. Right and left moves the horizontal positioning. It automatically saves it. So all you wanna do is try to get that red border uh, pretty uniformly all the way around the outside of the screen. Uh, let's talk about the focus adjustment. So we need to go up to test pattern DDP. And if you go, uh, right to enter into the test pattern and then left to get back you'll see this very fine grid crosshatch pattern and now I'm going to go behind the TV and I'm just going to move the focus back and forth a little bit. It's helpful if you take one of the side the little six inch round covers off of one side you can actually see the picture from the back of the TV and now very carefully you can reach in and you can turn that focus adjustment 
and you can see that the picture comes in and out of focus. So you just want to find the optimal focus point. Which looks like it's about right there. That looks good from the front of the set. And let's hit menu. Let's talk about just a couple other really quick adjustments here. We'll go uh, to the index delay. That's the color wheel index and you'll see the colors on the screen once again. And the way I like to do this one is it's on number 31 right now. I like to watch this red band. It seems to show up the best. It may be hard to see on the camera. But I'm just going to run that number up and I'm going to look and I'm going to see. I don't know if you can see it here, but it kind of changes uh, the color just a little bit. When you get it misadjusted, you start to see some oranges in it. So I'm going to bring it down until it just goes away. And it looks like it goes away at, oh, I'd say about 34. I'm going to go the other direction until I can see a distinct change right here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. But it goes away at about 22. So the difference between 22 and 34 is about 28. So I'm going to leave it at 28. The next thing you can go up to um, you have to go to the main menu and go down here to SP Actuator. And you'll see some crosshatch patterns on the screen. Now we're at 59 right now, so I'm going to change... I'm going to change that while watching the outcome. And you'll normally see the picture get very jagged. You have to look very closely. So I'm backing it back down now and it's getting clearer and clearer and clearer. And there's my optimal point. It's at 58 right now. So I'm going to go the other direction. You see it gets jagged. I'm down into the 30s now. And so you just want to get this until you get the absolute clearest picture. So it looks like 58 or 59 was the optimal point. In the option mode it gives you your lamp life. This one has 12,901 hours. Of course that may have been reset. If you go down here to lamp clear you can reset that if you wanted to. I would say this is probably the original lamp on this set because it is kind of dim. Okay, now to exit the service mode, just simply turn the set off. Turn the set back on a couple seconds later. If you wait longer than about 10 seconds, the lamp's going to go off. and You'll have to wait for a complete reset. Uh, it takes about a minute for the lamp to reset itself. So let's go to... Oh shoot, I'm on antenna, so I have to go into the menu and I have to tell it that I use an antenna. And there we go, we got a picture completely spot free at this point, it looks good. These are pretty good sets, uh, 720p. Uh, it's not a 1080 by any means, but you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that's only broadcast in 720 to begin with, so uh, it's still a really good TV. And on high def, it'll still have a really good picture. Let me see if I can get a high def channel on it there. Now that wasn't recorded in high def. There we go, there's one that is in high definition. It's still got just a really good clear picture on it. I think they're great sets. I really wish they still made the DLP sets. They're so much better in my estimation. The colors are more vibrant. The blacks look really good. Uh, the screen, you don't have to worry about breaking the screen like on an LCD or a plasma TV if your kid throws the Wii remote at it. And uh, like I said, I, I think if there's a better color depth. I uh, appreciate you uh, watching my little video, how to change a DLP chip on a 720p Samsung. Appreciate your support, your views, your comments. Have not been able to answer many comments recently, but nevertheless, hopefully somebody's out there giving you guys good information. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter, at NorCal715. Everybody have a great day. With your help, we can keep these things out of the recycle bin and out of the landfill. Bye-bye.